Good morning and welcome to Halponics. I'm going to give you a, a review and update on the plumbing. Obviously some of you are quite curious how this all works. Uh, we'll start with the drains. I've turned the water off, the uh, return water, so we can show you the drains. And what we have here, see we have a T hooked to a pipe that goes all the way to the bottom, or near the bottom. I've got uh, some net stretched over the, the end of the drain pipe there so that nothing swims up under it or any leaves get in there and clog the system. But the, uh, the tank is a constant level. It overflows into those drain pipes. I'm going to step over here right quick and turn the, turn the return pump back on. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. As you can see, we still got quite a bit growing there. And we're kind of experimenting with the plants, but there you go. Let's walk around the back side of the tanks here. Uh, this is where the, where the overflow comes out from the fish tank. I have four overflows. I have four beds. I have a valve on each one. I use these valves to adjust the flow into each bed. I like to keep them around 15 minutes, and that keeps everything kind of balanced. You have to be able to supply uh, water into the tank and, and back to the beds to keep it all pretty, pretty balanced. The bell siphons in each of the beds are used to flood and drain, and I use a simple bell siphon that you can find anywhere on the internet, or all, they're all over YouTube but you uh, get you a stand pipe. It's covered at the top, closed in at the top, got holes at the bottom. That's a one inch stand pipe in there that, that goes out and drains out the bottom. And what happens is the bed will, will flood uh, to a certain level and then drain out. And that's what you want it to do. I wanna look under here. See, I've used, see I've used 45s where the bell siphon drains out the bottom it hooks up to the plumbing, but that 45 there is called a, a coanda discharge, and that uh, that helps get the flow going. I'm using one inch pipe for the drains, and then they feed into an inch and a quarter pipe that goes down to the sump tank. All four of them drain into into the sump tank here. It's like we're fixing to get one of them to fire off, but You'll notice I've got 45s or, or 90s on each one of them that are pushing them away from this drain here because I had a problem with air bubbles building up in that drain. But uh, everything flows down into the sump tank and then from, uh, from the sump tank, I've got one pike costumus in there. He does a fine job and he's happy to be all by himself. Now, <clears throat> this tank stays at a, at a fairly good level. You see what I've done here when I added the, the deep water culture, I put one drain on there and I, I'm using a, a U siphon, which keeps the two uh, levels, it keeps the level in the deep water culture uh, pretty much constant with the, uh, with the level in the sump tank. The two inch was not enough of a drain uh, to, to, to satisfy the, uh, keeping it fairly level. So I just now put another one in there. So now I've got two of them. They work just great. This is our uh, deep water culture that we've just added recently. You see I haven't even finished cutting the holes for the, uh, for the net pots to sit into, but uh, we've got some things started and trying and it's still a learning process. We've got uh, four four inch uh, yeah, air stones as your air stone but they uh, they deliver a lot of dissolved oxygen to the water and uh, keep everything well aerated so now what happens is these drain pipes that you see back there coming out of the fish tank feeding all of the beds. The beds drain every 15 minutes 
into the sump tank and then the sump from the water from the sump tank from there it either has to be pumped back up to the fish tank if you're just using the gravel beds and you don't have a deep water culture attached to it like I have then you can just from the sump tank you deliver the water straight back to the fish tank. Now what I've done is delivered the water through the U-siphons to the deep water culture. Everything flows through here, 600 gallons a minute, and then the pump is down below here. So this is the uh, bypass. Right now I'm not using the bypass because it's, it's pretty well balanced, but see if I've got too much water going into my fish tank, then I can simply bypass it back here, but I'm keeping it turned off because that keeps the constant level. From the deep water culture, the water is pumped back over, underground, back up, and eventually right back in to the fish tank. Now, you see all the bubbles coming out of there. I'm using a Venturi aerator. Venturi aerator. <laughs> That's a mouthful. All I've got is a simple uh, rubber tube. I've got a T. Get back around here. I've got a T at the end of the return pipe, and then down on the end I got a 45. But what happens is the water returning there sucks a lot of air through that rubber tube and causes a venturi effect and adds to aeration of the water. And uh, pretty much that's it. Uh, it's, it's not that difficult, it just takes a little bit of thinking, and uh, guess what, you can do it too.